This 1500 meter race is genuinely unbelievable. If you have ever watched a running race in your life, then you will know that sprint finishes are what make them so exciting. In this race we are reviewing today, we have a 1500 meter final with Jakob Ingebrigtsen's older brother, Philip, taking part. Philip's goal for this race was of course to win the gold medal, so from the start he was hanging around right at the back, letting the majority of these runners do all of the work on the front. Another name was Jake Whiteman. Jake is a top level runner and he also was looking for the gold medal during this race. I think that Philip and Jake were the favourites, so a lot of people also had their eyes on these two guys. But another quick mention was Henrik. Henrik Ingebrigtsen is also another one of Jakob's older brothers. He was also in this race, however there was no Jakob in the race. So, they went through the first 400 meters as we're about to see here. It was a rather slow time of around 63 to 64 seconds. That's not good, that's just under 4 minute pace, which for the 1500 isn't fast, especially for these pro guys who can run well into the 330s and they have personal records around about that time, with I think even one or two of these guys having a sub 330 personal record. Championships are always slow because the runners try to win gold. They don't care about times in these types of races. All they care about is if they can come away with the medal. Hence why this was going to turn into a major sprint finish where whoever had the best kick was basically confirmed to win gold. Right now they are coming through and there will be two laps remaining once they go through this lap. It's going to be pretty insane. Philip Ingerickson still right at the back doesn't seem to really care. He's slotting himself in lane one, but I'm kind of worried that he might get boxed in. The French athlete is still leading this race. We have a couple of different moves being made. The Belgian runners coming along the outside, trying to overtake 210 for that. The half mile in 210, which is basically what the half marathon runners run for their world record attempt. So this is basically walking for these guys who are milers. So I noticed the pace did increase slightly as Jake Whiteman decided to go up the, the outside and at that moment the runners noticed and they started to increase the pace. It was a very subtle and slow wind up but now we can see that they're all taking this very seriously as they're coming round for only one lap to go. When that bell goes they are going to start flat out sprinting and at this point they basically already are. Jake Whiteman for Team GB is in lane 2 and he's now working up to 3rd place. Here the bell has been rung and Jake has unleashed a crazy kick, but has he kicked way too early? Well, wait and see if he wins the race or gets passed by almost everyone. Henrik Ingebrigtsen is also up there, he's doing a great job at staying with the pace. Philip has got himself boxed in in lane 1, but he's around about 5th position right now and he's actually overtaken Henrik, his brother. Philip is going for this and he is proper flat out, but he has timed his sprint finish almost to perfection. Jake Whiteman is still in the lead here, but you can just see him beginning to tie up and look extremely fatigued with mistiming his kick completely. Here we can see the German running for first, but out of nowhere, Philip Ingebrigtsen just starts unleashing a crazy kick along with the Spanish athlete who also timed his kick so well. A 51 second last 400 meters is genuinely insane. That is extremely fast, up there with the top 10 fastest ever last laps of a 1500 meter race. You can see just how disbelieved Philip is, even though that's not a word. I just can't really explain how he must be feeling right now because he probably didn't expect to outkick all those guys over the last 100 meters by simply moving out into lane 4. It was a very, very great run and Henrik unfortunately missed out but he did really, really struggle towards the end of that race as he also kicked a bit too early like Jake Whiteman did. Poor Jake Whiteman who was originally leading with only one lap to go started sprinting way too early on and as a result it just ruined his entire race. The rest of the runners in this pack timed their race to perfection 
and it was insane to watch. I couldn't believe it and it was actually really exciting because the race as a whole was really tactical. When races are tactical they become super fun. Jake Whiteman attempted to win the race but he just didn't have the last kick and he had to hold on. I studied his race in slow motion and found that he actually put his kick in from the last 400 to 300 meters. It was between that 100 meters and that's when he basically lost all his energy. He kicked way too early and I think he expected to be able to easily pull away from everyone and run like a 53 second lap but he didn't realize that literally everyone was in great shape and quite literally everyone in this race had planned to have this happen. They'd probably done training specifically geared towards sprinting over the last lap. I also noticed Camelli in this race, we had Andoni, Henrik and Gabrixen. it was loaded you guys, this field was absolutely loaded, hence why the last lap was incredibly fast. Now the time isn't fast at all, overall 3.46 is still over 10-15 seconds slower than a lot of these guys personal records, but it just goes to show that at these championships anything can happen, and when tactics are used, you can be in a whole bunch of trouble if you just mistime your race or your kick by a millisecond. It is crazy, and I think that Philip honestly was in a state of disbelief that he actually won the race, and I think that he was expecting to not be able to outkick Jake Whiteman, who has one of the best kicks out of all milers, all middle distance runners in history, uh, let alone in that current time. I watched this race multiple times, I watched it when it happened in real time and I've now replayed this and did my own reaction because I love it. It is one of my favourite 1500 meter races, there are a couple of other ones, I think one of the athletes Bernabad is also known for kicking super hard at the end of a 1500 meter European champs but when he did that he took off his vest and I think he got in a lot of trouble for doing that during a celebration. So these athletes are obviously used to doing kicks over the last lap but it's just whether they can time it. Do you know what, I think that over the last few years there's been a lack of proper tactical running. I find some of the races genuinely boring and it usually is when there's no big names involved. I tell you what though, there's going to be a new era of tactical racing because with the likes of Josh Kerr and Jakob Ingebrigtsen and their crazy rivalry, I think we're going to see some absolutely insane tactical races. If you don't know who those two are, then you better subscribe to this channel as there's going to be some even crazier races coming on this channel very, very soon. The winter indoor season is coming up and the cross country season is coming up also. Please subscribe and leave a like on today's video to show support for my channel and also good luck in your training and racing. So other than that, I'll be covering races tomorrow and all throughout next week. I hope you're all well and your training's going well and congratulations to those that did the cross challenge in Cardiff.